Scientists urging drastic cuts to our fossil fuel use say we're not on pace to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. As a result, some of them now support controversial technologies that could blunt the Earth's rising temperatures, broadly known as geoengineering. As senior national and environmental correspondent Ben Tracy reports, the basic idea is to dim the sun. I'm going to put this on, hold it shut. Yep. On a recent morning along San Francisco Bay, two self-described tech guys, I mean, we're definitely not scientists, launched a small but provocative experiment. It's pathetic, but it's a start. Luke Isaman and Andrew Song are the duo behind Make Sunsets. Its mission is pretty clear. They sent a weather balloon filled with small amounts of sulfur dioxide 12 miles up into the stratosphere. There we go. When the balloon pops, the particles released reflect sunlight, theoretically and microscopically cooling Earth. Should a couple of tech bros be the guys experimenting with this with no scientific background? No, this should absolutely be something that is well-funded and done in responsible labs with adults and international consensus. I'll be thrilled to shut this company down in the off chance that that happens. In the meantime, we have to take action. The work of Make Sunsets is a, a stunt, uh, a provocation. Peter Frumhoff is a climate scientist at Harvard. He says Make Sunsets has drawn attention to geoengineering as a potential response to rising global temperatures and runaway climate change. I think of solar geoengineering as the worst possible way to address climate change that we need to take seriously. What exactly is solar geoengineering? A set of proposed technologies to rapidly cool the Earth um, by reflecting sunlight um, back into space. The idea is based on the cooling effect of volcanic eruptions. When Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines erupted in 1991, it spewed 20 million tons of sulfur dioxide into the sky. That reflected so much sunlight, global temperatures dropped by an entire degree the following year. So one notion is that we could mimic those volcanic eruptions by sending specially equipped airplanes into the stratosphere to do exactly the same thing. The U.S. government is now flying high-altitude planes through the stratosphere to study what sun-blocking gases may already be there. Microsoft founder Bill Gates backed a major project at Harvard using balloons to deploy aerosols, but tests were put on hold after some pushback. And while it may seem far-fetched, a recent United Nations report seriously considers using giant space mirrors to deflect sunlight, while other scientists propose mining moon dust and launching it at the sun. At the Palo Alto Research Center in Silicon Valley, this white tent is a makeshift lab for experiments with something called marine cloud brightening. This will generate the plume that will contain the aerosols. It injects salt water into clouds over the ocean. The idea is you'll make the clouds a little brighter and that will reflect more sunlight back up into the atmosphere? Exactly, that's the idea. Those effects could be beneficial or they could be negative. Kelly Wanzer runs Silver Linings, an organization advocating for research into climate interventions like cloud brightening. But she says we need to quickly curb our planet warming fossil fuel emissions because dimming the sun isn't a long term solution. It's a sign of desperation. This would not be the first choice. No, or third or fourth choice. You have to compare it to overloading the system with warming and the, and the environmental system starting to break down, which is where we're sitting on the edge of. This is something that might provide some cooling and buy us some time to rapidly shift away from fossil fuels. That's right, but there are a lot of things that we don't know. How does the climate system respond if you do that over a long period of time? If it all sounds like science fiction, well, it was. 18 years I've hated the train. The 2013 film Snowpiercer depicted geoengineering gone awry, turning the planet into a dystopian snow globe and confining humanity to a high-speed train. Climate scientists are divided on geoengineering. In dueling public letters, one side calls for accelerated research, while the other wants it banned, warning the possible deployment of solar geoengineering by individual nations would be frightening and inequitable. Solar geoengineering is unprecedented. It will impact everyone. Suchi Talati is a former Energy Department official. She now runs an organization pushing for developing nations to have a voice in decisions about geoengineering. 
Many of these countries have been disproportionately impacted by climate change. I think right now the global north is entirely dominating the conversation and speaking on behalf of a lot of different communities and countries in the global south. And I think that's incredibly dangerous and incredibly disrespectful. I think what we really need is an international conversation, right? Solar geoengineering is a desperate measure and one that we should make every effort to avoid. Peter Frumhoff says we also need to speed up the clean energy transition so we don't have to rely on risky and rogue experiments Ready? Point it down, yeah. in an attempt to supervise the sun. For CBS Saturday Morning, I'm Ben Tracy in San Francisco. It's fantastic. I mean, so much to think about. Yeah. Snowpiercer, by the way, really good movie. Yeah, really. You haven't, you haven't seen it. But and as he said, it does sound like, I mean, giant space mirrors mm -hmm. right. shooting out moon dust. It does sound like science fiction, but... We're there. What, we're, it, what does it say, though, that we're there when we're talking about these kinds of efforts and how desperate and last-ditch efforts these are in order to save our planet? Yeah, a big question mark. Also, too, who will ultimately regulate all of this mm. and how are we going to come yeah. together and figuring that part of it out?